three of us are standing here talking about a peaceful transfer of power speaks to the uh, in institutional integrity of our country. We are both trying to come back to normalcy, deal with totally abnormal challenges, and do what we do best, which is try to make a more perfect union. We can have fierce disagreements uh, and yet recognize each other's common humanity and that as Americans, uh, we have more in common than what separates us. After the last four years, it's easy to forget what presidential leadership is supposed to sound like. It really was a profound message of hope, though, last night, courtesy of what's been called the most exclusive fraternity on the planet, the ex-presidents club. Conspicuously absent there, of course, that fraternity's newest inductee, Donald Trump. And it's rather obvious why. The subtext of that recommitment to American values and a transfer of power was the idea that Trump was an outlier, an aberration, that we are really better than what we've been through over the last four years. Joining our conversation, MSNBC political contributor, former Congressman David Jolly, now the national chairman of the Serve America movement. Michael Steele still here. David Jolly, your thoughts on everything that transpired yesterday and, and specifically the three presidents, former presidents who were in attendance. Critically important words from three former presidents. And though they may have been offered to our new president, Joe Biden, the audience intended was the world. Uh, that was a message for the world to hear and for world leaders to hear that American democracy, in the words of Joe Biden, had prevailed yesterday, that our system had sustained four years of disruption under Donald Trump. And you, all you have to do for a brief moment, Nicole, is think about if the message of unity had failed yesterday, where we would be. Yeah. The importance of that message of unity. You know, Joe Biden did not give an overtly ideological speech. It, it would have seemed tone deaf. It would have been tone deaf if he had seemed overconfident. I mean, we've, we've lived through four years of a president offering false confidence. We are a nation beleaguered by a pandemic with an economy that's been supported by artificial stimulus from the Congress and from the Fed. We are dealing with a radical, violent political movement in the United States. And so the only message yesterday that would have worked is unity, and strength of our democracy. It was the only card that Joe Biden had to play. Unfortunately for the country, it was Joe Biden's best card, unity and strength of our democracy. And his message was affirmed by President Obama, Clinton, and Bush 43. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to associate myself with everything that David Jolly just said. But, um, Michael Steele, <laughs> I was thinking when I watched them of, of how Joe Biden can, can tap them. Because another thing that wasn't normal was most presidents in both parties tap their predecessors to help them with big things, often big philanthropic things. Um, presidents, um, the President 43's father, the, the, the first President Bush and Bill Clinton raised money for victims of natural disasters and and. and floods and and there there is a role for former presidents and I, I wonder if you have any thoughts on what Joe President Biden might tap them for uh, first I want to associate myself with the comments of my friend uh, mr. Jolly absolutely um, number two um, I think I think you're going to see a 180 degree turn yeah. uh, in terms of how this White House uh, works with these former presidents who by their very presence here today, not just only affirmed the collegiality of that particular club, um, but uh, affirmed uh, their re-entry into the body politic on behalf of this president. Um, and, and I think that's so incredibly important and will be necessary going forward. Just think about what a President George Bush reaching out to Mitch McConnell and other Republicans on the House and Senate side uh, to help move the country's agenda forward. I didn't say Joe Biden's agenda. I said the country's yeah. agenda forward. Just think about what a President Barack Obama, uh, the, now, you know, having his vice president there, when it gets really sticky, when you hear those progressives sort of beating the drum to kind of move off of the country's agenda, what that will mean. I think it's an important opportunity. David Jolly and Michael Steele, thank you both so much for spending some time with us today. It's great to see you both. When we return, as we 